Hi handsome and welcome to my third video. In this video, we are going to answer the ever-present question in Black Desert, and that is, which class is actually the best? Now, although most of what I'm going to say is most likely going to apply to PvP as well, I want this video to be aimed mostly towards PvE. With that little disclaimer, let's get into the talk and answer this question once and for all. Now, you might be coming into this with some prior knowledge of the game, so you might already have an idea of what I'm going to say. And you might be thinking something like, oh, he's going to say Wusa because Wusa is simply broken and she's been the best forever. He might go for her sister Megu because nerf Megu. He might go for Sage, because Sage is the main character. He might go for Shy, because he's never going to escape the Tamer allegation. He might even say Kunoichi, and this is all a meme, and you just need to get good at the game, right? Because Kunoichi is actually the best character. It's obviously Tamer. I mean, I play Tamer. She has a dog. She can ride the dog. And that's about it. I don't know. I did not think this through. It's not going to be Tamer. It's going to be something else. So just wait. It's a surprise. Let's specify this just for PvE grinding. Because if we did not then with the amount of activities there are in Black Desert, we would have been forever. So let's keep this concise. With grinding, we can say that there are like three or maybe four, if you want to look at it a little bit different, types of grind spots. So you have number one, you have the early game spots. So these are spots, usually they are not very interesting on their own. They have a lot of mobs and very high density. This would be like your potion pieces spots and like other Tuvala grindings. And you just one shot everyone. And for this type, you're gonna want a class that not only has a lot of mobility, so it can move fast between these packs of mobs, it, it also has good stamina use, so it, you, you don't run out of stamina in the like third pack. Then we have the big monster spots, so it will say this spot has fewer or more powerful monsters. It usually still has specs of monsters, but these monsters are big, and they take way longer to kill, but if you kill them, they give you more rewards, right? So these are the big, big monsters. And for this, you still want something that's mobile, but you just want something that like can get behind an enemy very quick and punish, right? So you get those back attacks, you get that critical damage, and you kill mobs as fast as you can. You don't really care about stamina as much. Then you have the stand, stand in one place and just deal with waves of mobs. So these would be your Dekia spots and also like Stars and Pillars and Murabox Labyrinth and stuff like this, right? These spots, you don't care about movement almost at all because all the mobs will just come to you and you all you need to do is just kill them all as fast as you can. And lastly, we have like some sorts of combination spots. I think the best example is like Elvia Giants or Elvia Hex. You usually have packs of mobs that you run a bit thin, but then it also has like a wave mechanic, so you trigger an event and the event just starts spawning mobs and you need to kill like a couple of waves of mobs and then there is a chance that you also get a boss and in the entire Elvia Calfion area there is a chance that you get like a big boss so it's like either I think a Cyclops or an Ogre or like some kind of undead uh, guy but you can get one of these right so you have both the waves you have the running around and you have the big boss as well so kind of combines all of the all of the other ones and then we also need to talk about like early game versus late game so you need to worry about not dying as well. So some classes with better protection will do better at some spots where the mobs hit really hard. Okay, so if it's none of these classes, then which class can it be, you might be asking. Well, I won't keep you waiting any longer. So here it is. The best class in BDO is the class you enjoy the most. 
hold on, don't click off the video just yet. Let me cook here, okay? In order to explain myself, I should probably mention that there is no such thing as objectively the best class. There is no class that does everything better than other classes. Just because a class is slightly better at small scale PvP, is going to be better at large scale PvP and sieges, just because a class struggles at some specific grind spot that does not mean that that class is actually bad it just means that you might need to look for other spots so let's take a look into what i mean by this let's have a look at how it actually looks in the numbers so this is garmov.com i've already talked about this you probably already know this place and because i have the subscription i can actually show you how this works if we look at Cyclops, which is shown to be the best, and we look here, which we, we can see because we have the subscription, we can see that there are rankings for every single class. Let's just take like the first 10 classes and look at the numbers. Just a reminder to take all of these with a grain of salt because it's still Garmov. I talked about this in my previous video. It's still Garmov, so people can still lie, especially when it's like smaller numbers. Be especially wary of those, because it's probably not going to be entirely accurate. But it's still, if we assume that everyone is lying, then this comparison is still roughly the same. Just be wary of these smaller numbers, that's all. But yeah, this is the Kia Cyclops. So we have like Succession Wizard, Vogue Drakania, Tamer Sack, uh, Vogue Hashashin, Corsair Sack, Shy Sack. These are the top, let's say, six. And this is the type of spot where you just wait for mobs to come. Let's take a spot where you just grind mobs, like pack to pack, and you need to run between them, and but still in game spot. And we'll see that all of a sudden, Dracania is still here, but everyone else is different. So we have Awakening Tamer instead of Succession, that was better in the Dekia spot. We have Awakening Nova, we have Succession Meigu, and we have Succession Kunoichi, even if it's like slightly less hours. So you can already see that these classes are different, because these classes excel at something that the other classes don't. If we take this further, let's go to Gaifin Under, which is the big mobs, right? So the powerful monster spot. And once again, we see completely different classes. So we have Succession Kunoichi, Awakening Scholar, we have F Awakening Mystic, Succession Guardian, and Succession Berserker. So once again, different spots and then if we take like let's go like down here into early game spots for example blood wolf settlement this is one of the potion piece spots right once again you see that we have different classes again take them with a grain of salt because the hours are not really there or they're not tracked as well but you see we have awakening berserker awakening ninja we can maybe skip this but yeah, it's still there, right? Dark Knight Succession, Succession Meiva, Awakening Corsair, Awakening Valkyrie. And we just see that these are completely different. Let's go with a different, like a slightly different spot. Let's go with Kratuga. This is also a very popular spot for, for lower end players. And we see Succession Witch, uh, Archer, and Ranger, and Musa, and Nova Awakening, and Berserker, right? So again, we have different classes not every class is going to be great at every single spot it's not as much about like this class is the best or like this class is better than the other yes there still might be classes like that but it's usually better at this spot right better at that spot and all of this means that if you want to play a specific class you can either do this one of two ways so either you just play the class you like, right? which is the way I would prefer it for you to do, right? So just play the class you enjoy. Or in some cases where maybe you need a specific item, so for example this potion piece, you could just make a tag, which I'm going to get to later, and just take the class that is good at the specific spot and just grind it on the other class. And then once you are done, you can just throw the class away. So you can either do it like, I, I don't care, and I'm just gonna find the spot that suits my class, or you can reverse engineer this and say, okay, this spot is good for these classes, so I'm going to play these classes to min-max this specific spot. And then you just throw that class away. 
thing. Or maybe you just stick to it because you, you like the class as well. Okay, but you might be saying, You know, Lunai, I saw Nova awakening suspiciously often up in those top 5 spots that you have just shown me. And you are correct, she was there. But my second point is that even then, it does not really matter. Because if Nova awakening is something that you do not enjoy, and you would rather play something else, like for example Tamer here, you are still going to be playing the Tamer more often, right? So if you grind more, even if you grind inefficiently, you are still going to be making more money because uh, you are actually spending the time at the grind spot. Let's say Nova Awakening is really good and she makes a thousand more trash per hour, but because she is so intensive and you, it requires so much APM, you just cannot take it and after an hour you are too exhausted to play anymore, so you have to stop playing. While Tamer Succession is maybe a little bit slower, or let's take Guardian for example, if you don't want Tamer, right? So so maybe Guardian is, is more your speed and you enjoy her more, so you might be able to do like 90 minutes, you know, or 2 hours. And all of a sudden, even if Nova makes more trash than the Guardian would, just because you spent more time grinding, you actually made more money. And this actually works the other way around as well. So if, for example, the Guardian is just simply way too boring for you and you just feel like you want to play something else and you just want to play the Nova or you want to play Ninja or Kunoichi or something that is like very intensive, very high APM and you feel like you are in a, a fighting game or you're like playing some ARPG or something, then obviously you can do that as well and once again it won't really matter if the Guardian is better at the spot because once again you are going to be grinding longer on the class that you enjoy more. So keep that in mind because that is one of the more important parts of this entire video and this entire debate. Just because a class is better does not mean that it will be more money for you if you simply do not enjoy the class. So yeah, those were the maths arguments and I hope I got to persuade you already. But in case I didn't, then let me hit you with another one. And this time it's not going to be simply speaking about numbers, but it's going to be more, let's say, thought-provoking. So, in case you didn't know, Black Desert Online is a video game. Do you know what video games are supposed to be? That's right, entertainment. They are supposed to be fun. Now, obviously, you can find fun in many ways, and especially in BDO, you can be having fun in whatever way you want. Just because a class is better or worse does not mean that you are a better or worse player because you play that class, right? A lot of people, when they look at these tier lists, they just want to know if they made the right choice, right? They want to be validated. They want to know, oh, I'm playing the good class. Or maybe they are the other way around. Maybe they want to play the worst class in the game because they just want to be the underdog and maybe they even want to play like the less popular classes because they want to be a hipster. Whatever they want to do, it is up to them because as long as they find it fun, and this goes, just so we are clear, this is true for min-maxing as well. If you find min-maxing fun, then go ahead and min-max. Just don't expect everyone else to do so. I am so sick and tired of this entire idea of efficiency in MMOs, like it's your actual second life and you just need to make the most of every single second that you spend in the game, like it actually matters. I might actually make a video on on this topic alone because I find it so insane that we went from something that's supposed to be something that you spend your free time on and just have fun with into something that is basically a second job and it's like a part of your life and if you don't do everything that it requires of you then somehow you are a failure. This is my appeal to you and I hope that you have fun in the game. That is what's the most important. And if you find a class that is fun to play, who cares if it's bad or good? You are having fun, that is the most important part. This actually goes for every single part of BDO, I hear this so often. Like, don't do fishing, don't do lumbering, don't do this, don't do that. Why not? Just, if, if you find it fun, just go and do it. Like, who, wh why should anyone tell you otherwise? Why should they tell you that you are wasting your time or that, they are, that you are griefing yourself simply because 
You are doing something that you find fun that might not be the best? Who are they to tell you otherwise? Of course, if you want to know which activity is the best money, then sure, that, that's one thing and that's completely fine. But if you just want to have fun, then just have fun. It's that simple. Now, before we end this video, I need to mention one more thing, and that is if you are a newer player, you would obviously know which class you are going to enjoy the most, so this entire video might be pointless for you. BDO does not have the holy trinity that other MMOs have, so you can't really choose if you want to be tank healer or damage dealer, but you can always choose like what kind of fantasy do I want my character to be. If you want to be like an assassin or like someone with a shield or a caster or someone with a bow or stuff like this, there should be a class for you. If we count awakening and succession as two different classes, then we have like 56, 57 classes, something like that, like an insane amount of classes so there should be something for you another thing that's also a good way to choose a class when you are getting started is to just look at the aesthetics if the character appeals to you visually in any way be it like the animations or just the character itself if it just appeals to you visually there is a chance you might like that character as well if you connect with the character on like a spiritual level you are going to be playing that character more often this is especially better for like I would say the older classes, because the older classes have way more customization options, and by customization I obviously mean Pearl Shop costumes. If you play a newer class, like the Scholar, you might not have as many costumes to choose from, and that might be a problem for you, but if you play one of the older classes, then you will have a lot of customization to choose from. So that might also help you. Now, obviously, gameplay is the most important part, and unless you try the character yourself, you won't really know if you are going to like it or not, just the aesthetics and the fantasy might not be enough. But video also has the feature that is called the trial character and it means that it will just give you a max level or like high level character that you can try for yourself and you can try all the skills and see what the character feels like. So if you are unsure but you feel like you might enjoy a specific class, you can make a trial character and try it out like this. Now if you choose a class and later on you decide that it's not the class for you because maybe you thought you would like it but after a certain amount of time you did not like it as much there is a thing called the tagging system which lets you copy your gear whatever gear you have it lets you copy that onto another character and it will basically share the xp gain between that character and your original character that you are copying the gear from so you can not only just level that character by playing on the one you have and eventually you can just choose whichever character you want to play you can also copy gear onto that character so you don't have to grind for that gear again that is also a good way to try new characters and see if you like them all right that's the video out of the way i hope you learned something new maybe got a new perspective on the classes in bdo i tried to use the main arguments i could have gone on for longer but i don't want this video to be too long i hope you liked it and either way i hope you like the b-roll footage i hope it's at least watchable my computer is not that strong so i hope it is, it, it's at least not choppy i recorded at 30 fps with a lower quality so do let me know if i should or if i can include more of that and with that out of the way i bid you farewell i hope you like and subscribe or whatever it is that you have to do and enjoy your grind